I'm seriously attracted to the stuff in your trailer. How do you make money for nothing? Is it a trampoline or a bed? Well, if we get out, we can have a jump on it. The answer could be hiding in the 30 million tonnes of household waste we throw out every year. They are ready to be re-loved again, don't you think? That's why entrepreneur Sarah Moore wants to get her hands on things before they hit the skip. Must be 100 years old, wasn't it? It looks it. I love old stuff. Finding it, buying it and reusing it. And I've turned that passion into a business. Transforming items that nobody wants into things that I can sell for a profit. And with some of the country's elite designers and makers... Wow, that's amazing. They are a bit weird, aren't they? I love them. She can transform her finds into desirable... Are they beautiful? A labour of love. Valuable... I've never seen anything like that. And hopefully saleable items. Martin, those are amazing. Thanks very much. If Sarah is successful, Ooh. then she can hand the profits <laughs> back to the very people who had no idea there was cash to be made from their trash. I have got £270 oh, here. Thank you so much. It's all fun and games at the Canesham Recycling Centre. As the people of Somerset play, which skip will fill up fastest? But Sarah Moore's idea of fun is taking things from the bottom of the pile to the top of the heap. So what's your game? Do you like boxing? Maybe it's golf or even... How about a game of squash? Well, for me, I'm in the recycling game. I'm here to make money out of people's rubbish. I think that was a badminton racket, Sarah. Sarah never tires of searching for three potential projects. Looks like a lovely little beat full. I'm going to keep my eye on you. But she did have to get special permission. So don't try this yourself, as you could end up with egg on your face. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put him back together again. But I bet I know some people that could. Ready for a makeover, Humpty? Ruth's arrived, but will Sarah be excited by what she's brought along? Oh, hello there. Hi. Sorry to bother you. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hello. Hi there. What's your name? Sorry. Uh, Ruth. Ruth. Sorry to bother you when you're busy, but I was just wondering what that was. It's splashback glass. We've had a disastrous kitchen fit. Yeah, they templated once and templated twice, but unfortunately made the glass to the first template instead of the second template. And so this is all excess. There's about five more pieces, all different shapes and sizes, all bespoke. So very awkward to reuse. If it's the toughened glass, there's nothing you can do with it. You can't cut it or reuse it, can you? You can't re-template or... No, no, we were told, uh, you know, when we were left with it, this, you, you, you cannot cut this, it will just shatter. Oh, uh, it's dear. quite tricky to recycle. It's just the kind of thing, a challenge like that, that I would love to see if I could do something with. I'm sure I can find somebody to hopefully do something different with it. So would it be possible for me to have it and to keep in touch with you to show you what happens with it? I would be delighted if you could make something of it. Oh, yes. fantastic. Is the kitchen now finished, dare I ask? So it's taken the time, but it is now done. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to think hard with this one, but that's, that's a great find for me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Sarah is carefully carrying off sheets of bright splashback glass. Ruth, are you happy it hasn't ended up like the rest of the glass in this place? I am so chuffed. I'm so chuffed it's going to be reused and not wasted. Luxury tough and glass splashback? Yes, please. To repurpose, though, this is going to be fiendishly difficult. I'm really pleased I've got my hands on it. So pleased to find it, and I'm going to get my thinking cap on. But which maker can really make a splash with this project? It's Zoe Murphy. A furniture and textiles designer, Zoe can brighten up old and forgotten furniture with printed patterns so colourful it would make a rainbow blush. So I'm a printed textile designer. That means I love printing onto things. And if anything sits still for long enough in my studio, it's probably going to have a print on it. I really love colour. <laughs> I use a lot of colour. Honestly, I think it's my favourite thing. People are always really shocked, but in quite a kind of happy and nicely surprised way. It always makes me feel really good about doing my job. 
Well, Zoe, colour's not the problem with this glass. It's what you're going to do with it that could be tricky. With one item set aside... You're giving up fishing? Sarah's back at the boots, hoping to reel in two more things before the day is done. Got some competition. I thought I was the only one who was allowed to take stuff around here. Oi! Shoo! Unless you're after some old chips and a black bag, I think you'll be fine. Charles is busy unloading, and Sarah's swooped in on his rubbish before. It was his old mangle that first caught her eye and was reimagined into a seat and planter. But will she see potential in what he's chucking today? Hello, that good morning. That was not what I was expecting to see coming out of the back of the car. Um, oh dear. Yes, it's been sat in the garage for a while and we've come to the conclusion this time it moved on. But a beautiful old chair. I mean, once that would have been absolutely amazing, wouldn't it? It might have actually been my grandmother's. OK. Uh, and when we uh, cleared our house out, it was rather not too, too good to let go. What do you think it is? Is it sort of early Victorian or...? Quite possibly, yeah. Her father was quite active in the mid-1800s, so... Right. ..he would have certainly been so sort of prosperous enough to buy a chair like that. Tricky to know quite what to do. Have you thought about trying to have it restored or we anything like that? We have been thinking and talking about it for a long time. Yep. But thinking and talking doesn't always achieve. Certainly needs saving, so is there any chance I could do that job for you? You're very welcome, because I'd like to see it find a new home that's valued. Fantastic. Well, I'm, I'm charmed by it. I really hope that I can get it back on its feet and uh, just say thank you so much. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Sarah's carrying off an ancient armchair. Charles, are you pleased she's taken it on? I'm delighted it's got a potential new future. It'll be very interesting to see what she does with it. It's got wear, it's got tear, it's got wood lice, but it has unmistakable hallmarks of quality. But a massive job to turn this into something that you'd even sit on, let alone turn a profit on. But which maker has the creative can-do for this colossal challenge? Simeon Horton Smith. An upholstery expert, Simeon uses his skills to turn outdated furniture into modern masterpieces, fit for a king. I absolutely love chairs. Whenever I go out, I might be in a restaurant or a hotel, I'm always looking at the chairs to see what they've used. Most sort of exciting part of my job is when a client brings a really rare chair to me and I get to put a beautiful fabric on it and give it a new lease of life not uncommon for me to wake up in the middle of the night and think, I know what fabric to use on that chair, or I know how to make that chair look even better. And that's the exciting part of my job. Well, Simeon, hopefully you won't have sleepless nights when trying to revive this antique armchair. With two items tucked away... What have you got, then? Anything exciting? Sarah's got one more to find something that she'll work on herself. Well, the streets round here are literally paved with gold. 24 karat solid gold wrapping paper. Mark's got his hands full, but is he sitting on a gold mine? Hello there. What is it? Uh, an old thing that I'm unaware of, really. We just sort of had it in the house. It's time for it to go. I should introduce myself. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hello. Hello, what's your name? Mark, I'm Mark. Mark. It just caught my eye. I wasn't quite sure what it was. I thought it might have a sewing machine or something like that in it. You know what? I have no idea. It sort of just came into our possession. So I have no idea what it was originally for. We've just used it to store DVDs in it. Excellent. Did you inherit it? It was something my housemate inherited, yeah. Okay. It, was, it was sort of by a family friend and and as I say, they, they dished out a load of old things and this was just one of them, yeah, and we, and we picked them up. Ending up at the recycling centre today, what's happening? So we're moving out and there's just no space for it at the moment um, and it doesn't really fit with the, with the current house, so... It looks like the kind of utility piece of furniture that people kind of had after the war when you had a small space, not much materials, and perhaps wanted a piece of furniture that was quite versatile. But it does look like it could be resurrected and put back into use. Would it be OK if I had a go at doing that? Yeah, well, that would be awesome. That would be awesome, yeah. Excellent. Lovely. Well, I'll keep in touch. Awesome. Take nice care, Nice to meet Mark. Thank you. Sarah's final find is an oak serving table. Mark, do you think she can find a use for it? It's going to be a lot more useful than being sat under our stairs with DVDs in it. You're right there, Mark. Oh, classy. 
Well, I think I've managed to get my hands on a little serving table. I can imagine this with its wings out, stacked with Christmas dinner, and this was a useful, relevant piece of furniture. Not so much today, but I reckon it's got potential. And with that, Sarah has her items. Zoe has to turn the tricky toughened glass into a smash hit. Simeon's challenge is to somehow save the centuries-old seat. And Sarah could have her work cut out trying to make the old serving table serve a new purpose. Three solid items that I've found. I'm really hoping they can be glamorous, beautiful and transformable into moneymakers. The seaside town of Margate is a vibrant, colourful place. And Sarah is making it a whole lot brighter by bringing along the yellow splashback glass. And that shirt's not dull either. But will Zoe think the glass has a bright future? I'm really looking forward to seeing what Sarah brings along today. I feel like a bit of a challenge, so looking forward to seeing what she's got. It is fiendishly difficult to do anything with this type of material. But together, I'm hoping we can get some good ideas going for it. So pretty. How are you doing? I'm doing OK. Glass, what do you think? Yeah, I love the colour. I can see why you thought of me with the colour. I've not had loads of practice working on glass, though, so this is going to be interesting. It, it was a misorder from a kitchen company, I think. They got the measurements wrong, and it's toughened glass, so you can't recut it. Fun yellow glass that I can't cut and that I have to somehow get a pattern onto. What could I potentially do with it, do you reckon? Have you got any ideas? Yes, a few. I was thinking that this would make a fantastic table. These are a nice size for a table. The shapes lend themselves to that already. So you're going to have to build tables and frames around the glass to get them to be super functional. We're breaking new ground here for me a bit. Usually I'm used to working with a piece of furniture that's already built. But I think I'm definitely going to have a go with doing one. I, I'm really pleased you don't mind the idea of a table. So what do you think is the best plan for this whole bundle? The big shape, I don't know if I'm going to really be able to get much out of that. I think with the skinnier bits, maybe some nice slogan signs. Maybe I'll try out some really bright colours, some poppy florals, but also getting some wording in too. Signs as well, that I've got to see. I think that if I can strip a bit of the yellow coating underneath, I could then put some prints on that would show through and we can still keep that nice polished finish on the top. So with all of that said, I think we'll get one good sized coffee table out of it at least and definitely two sort of slogan upbeat signs for the wall as well. Lovely. I think that's a great place to leave this. Can you give me an individual price then? How much is a sign? How much is a coffee table? So it's going to be about 400 for the coffee table and then I'm going to say 100 each for the signs. How's that? Fantastic. So nice to see you, and good luck with that. It's a challenge, but I reckon if it goes well, it'll be so good. OK, thanks, Sarah. Nice to see, see you. See you soon. <laughs> Not worked with glass quite like this before, but I've got, I've got a good feeling. I feel like something really amazing is going to come out of this. I feel like Zoe is going to be breaking new ground, but hopefully not my glass with her designs. Plenty to be getting on with, so fingers crossed everything goes well. Zoe has £600 to produce a table and two signs. She has to build the table from scratch, print onto the tricky splash, and all without making it go crash. As Zoe carefully starts work, in Stockport. Sarah has sent over the really old and really dusty chair to the dynamic design duo Simeon and Gypsy. Gypsy had a late one last night, so he's letting Simeon take the lead today. So, Simeon, thoughts? For a start, the bottom's completely fallen out of it, so that's all good. Everything's gonna have to be rebuilt and put to proper fire eggs, so, yeah, challenging times ahead. Hey, Sarah, how are you? Hey, I'm good, Simeon. How are you? I'm really good. I'm really good. I've just, I've just got this very challenging-looking chair that has just arrived. Yeah, challenging's one word for it. I'm not quite sure what you'll find when you start to take it apart. Um, it might just be the fabric that's holding it together. 
what I have noticed, what I can see already, is that, you know, it's full traditional upholstery. I'm not sure what era it's from, whether it's, you know, Edwardian, Georgian, but it's got some beautiful shapes and details on it, on the frame. What were you thinking we should do with it? Well, as you said, the frame's so lovely, I wouldn't want to do too much more than just clean it up. It's quite dark, though, so perhaps some bright fabric would help liven it up. But what are you thinking? I want to make it quite regal, so I'm thinking like a nice velvet. And again, I agree with the frame. I think I should just clean that up so that it really still looks like a antique chair, even when it's got its new fabric on it. Oh, that sounds great. Excellent, Simeon. What kind of budget are you thinking about, though? With the fabric to get a real nice plush velvet with it around the 550 mark. OK, I'm happy with that. Yep, I just hope it doesn't give you too many problems. Let me know when it's done. I'll come and see you. Thanks. Perfect. I'll let you know. Thanks, Simeon. See you soon. Cool. All right, see you soon. Bye. Bye, bye. So I've just got off the phone with Sarah, and since sort of having the conversation, I am really quite worried about the budget, uh, whether I'm going to be able to keep in it, whether it's going to go way over, because I keep looking at the chair now and seeing how much work needs doing to it. Do you think you'll keep on budget, Gypsy? Oh, she's still feeling a bit rough. It'll be an optimistic £550 to regally restore the chair. Simeon's already concerned about blowing the budget. There's something worrying him about the scale of this rebuild, and he hasn't even started yet. With Zoe and Simeon cracking on with their projects, Sarah's at home in Sussex ready to do battle with the serving table. I need help. Come on. Come and do upcycling. And for this one, she's calling in reinforcements. I really feel like I can hear an SOS message coming out of this little serving table because it's just redundant. But loads of people need desks in their houses. So I'm thinking this could be repurposed into a modern, more decorative piece of furniture that hopefully people can use every day and want to have in their house. Bit of a tricky transformation because of its colour and the structure of it, but I do have a plan to remodel it and put all of it back into good use. So, Sarah's looking to serve up something more modern. 218s, 36. By converting the table into a desk. What's first? Dismantling is the first thing I need to do because I want the leaves on the side to actually be turned into the desktop that flips up at the front. That mechanism is great. Serving tables were once a staple in dining rooms. But thanks to open plan living, they're less popular today, as kitchens and dining areas are now often in the same space. Well, I've certainly managed to destroy it pretty quickly, and I'm pleased, though, because it looks like it's solid oak. Often there's veneer involved, but I think those are chunks of oak on the top, which is helpful for the finish I've got in mind. Dismantling done. Sarah's ready to attach the two end panels to form one great super panel. It's not helpful, is it? They're not straight either. Look, they nearly match at that end, and they're quite a long way out at that end. Luckily, my friend next door has a table saw. Oh, that's nice and handy. Time for a biscuit, I think. Not the kind you're thinking of. Something to join this together. And yet, every time someone mentions them on this show, I can't help but grab a custard cream. If I want to get a really straight join on the pieces of wood, it's very important the biscuit is completely flat. Luckily for me, it happens quite a lot. So I'm just going to glue those, I think sand them down a tiny bit, and then tap that together. And hopefully, I've got a really good join there. Happy with her biscuits, Sarah is first gluing, then hammering them into the holes before attaching the second panel. Wait for that to dry. Leaving it to set, Sarah's turning her attention to the frame. So I feel like if I was sitting at a desk, this bit along here might be really irritating, so I'm going to take that out and see how stable the rest of the carcass remains. I think that's a sore job. Oh, yeah, you'd constantly be banging your feet on that. Get it off. I think that's ready to go off to be sandblasted. If I can change the look of it, I think it's going to smarten it up. Including the sandblasting, Sarah spent £72 on this project, 
But will she manage to produce a desirable desk? Or will it be a dated blast from the past? In Margate, Zoe is preparing the bright yellow splashback glass to be turned into some signage and a brand new coffee table. I've chosen my piece of yellow glass that I'm going to use. It's nice proportions, I like the kind of size it is. I think it'll be really good for a coffee table. Now all I have to do is to remove some of that yellow coating to start printing my designs through. I think I'm going to do a nice oval shape in the centre of this table and strip all of that coating away. Zoe plans to build the coffee table frame from scratch and use the splashback glass as a decorative screen printed tabletop. Now I need to get busy with getting rid of this and only this. Zoe can't print directly onto the yellow coating, so is trying to shift it with a chemical stripper. It's got to be chemical stripper because I can't use any other method. I can't sand it off, I can't shot blast it, because anything that damages the kind of polished glass underneath this coating, it's gonna frost it, won't be able to see through it, but there's really no guarantee that this paint stripper is gonna work on this painted coating. If the chemical stripper doesn't work, Zoe will have to consider other methods, which could damage the glass. It's definitely doing something. I'm going to give it a little scratch <laughs> to see. It's the moment of truth. Here goes nothing. Yes, look at that. Off it peels. I knew it. I knew this table was going to be on board with me today. Aren't you? Yes, you are. She's talking to the toughened glass now. That must be a good sign. Toughened or tempered glass is made by heating glass to over 600 degrees. When broken, it shatters into small chunks instead of jagged shards, making it less likely to cause injury. I feel very good about that. You're doing quite well, Zoe. Oh, now she's talking to herself. Whatever makes her happy. The idea is I'm going to fill this whole eliminated negative space with print. So the very first thing I'm going to do is screen printing, but with glue. I really, really want to get some gold leaf onto the table. Ordinarily, paint is squeezed through silk screens to create precise patterns, but Zoe is using one to apply glue. I've done this before when I was much younger. What Zoe is actually using is imitation gold leaf, sometimes known as Dutch metal. It's a far more economical material, as you may imagine. Oh, sweet. Happy with her gold dot, Zoe is now using the silk screen in the more traditional way. Oh, I think that's worked out quite well. I suppose you could squeeze a banana through if you thought it would make a nice pattern. Oh, that looks so cool. So now I can build up design all in this negative space. I love that. Zoe gave up furniture. She fell in love with glass. I don't know who she's talking to now. Putting the glass to one side, Zoe now needs to build a table from scratch. Got some plywood to act as the base of the table. Usually I'm used to working with a piece of furniture that's already built. So this is a big learning moment for me. It doesn't matter how nice the glass is. If the table frame isn't right, it'll speak for itself. In Stockport, Simeon's already started stripping the ancient armchair. Gyps is lending emotional support because restoring this old thing could be a huge challenge. So, Simeon, any positives? So, the good thing about this chair is the, the frame is really sturdy. I was expecting it would be quite rickety, but it really is very sturdy. So, whoever put this chair together has definitely used Use the right glue, that's for sure. Simeon's promised Sarah a regal restoration with bright new fabric. Someone's making their home in here. But first, Simeon's removing the chair's original padding. This is straw or hay. They probably kept this all in one big bag. Um, am I sweating loads on this? No, you're fine. It means you're working hard. 
So on the floor of their workshop, probably a big bag of this that they used and they dip their hands into it and put it into the chair and everything. The little bits of like leather have found their way into it. You know, they did use some green velvet here. That's why I love doing vintage pieces because they have so much more history to them. And this chair has a lot of history. Before he continues, Simeon's doing a quick tidy up. But it looks like Gypsy's quite comfy on her bed of scraps. Gee, come on. Oh, poor Gypsy. I tend to kind of cut all the material away and then get rid of all these upholstery tacks and nails and get the frame back down to its bare bones. <laughs> Because of its age and the fact this chair has been re-upholstered several times, there are hundreds of tacks in the frame. Compared with modern staples, which often snap, leaving metal in the wood, tacks can be fairly easy to remove. Got a bit of a wobble there, though. The downside, however, is that all the bashing and hammering can weaken fragile frames. So, with the amount of tacks that I've had to take out, We've now got a few little structural problems. I'm going to have to put some PVA, clamp it, leave it a bit, come back to it, it'll all be nice. Luckily, all the tack bashings only loosened one joint, but it has left the rest of the frame in a bit of a state. Is that a problem, Simeon? See, I mean, the frame has been left quite wholly, but structurally it's sound and I've got lots to work with there. And it's a blank canvas again. You know, that's the main thing, that we can start rebuilding the seat for putting some beautiful fabric on it. He's a miracle worker. Simeon is planning to use tacks to recover the chair, along with other traditional upholstery techniques. However, the fabric he's considering is far from traditional. This Japanese print I really love, and then you could have a really nice kind of deep blue or like a royal blue with this. Yeah, I really like that. But is it going to be bright enough, really, for what I'm trying to achieve? That's the thing. Sarah did say she wanted it to be bright, so fabric choice will be key. Simeon needs to take this chair from holy to divine. In Sussex, Sarah is dressing the desk so it's ready for its close-up. Love that surface now. Refinishing has done this a world of favours. When Sarah found the serving table, it had served its purpose and was about to be skipped. But now... Sarah has given it a new look and a new lease of life by turning it into a modern desk. The oak frame has been sandblasted to reveal the lighter wood underneath. And the old leaves are now an extendable flap, which doubles the desktop size and conceals a cubby to pop your bits and bobs in. Sarah reused the original hinges to try and retain some mid-century character. And she's repurposed the drawer as a bookshelf, which she's lined with a floral vintage fabric. Sarah set out to create a contemporary set fit for a home office. But has she done enough to make it saleable? Well, bar a few tiny offcuts, what you see here is just what I started with. So it's the same piece of furniture that hopefully becomes a useful item that somebody can have in their home, do their work at, and fold it all away at the end of the day. Hello there. When Sarah met Mark, his table had served its time. It was something my housemate inherited. We've just used it to store DVDs in it. Sarah snapped it up and Mark was confident she put it to good use. It's going to be a lot more useful than being sat under our stairs with DVDs in it. Well, Mark, it's plenty useful now as a modern desk and bookcase. Sarah shared photos on social media. But did she manage to find a buyer? Sarah's in Bristol to see Mark, to show him the results and hopefully pass on a profit. 
Hello, Mark. Hello, how are you? I'm really well. How are you doing? Yeah, good, good, good. So, have you been looking for somewhere to store your DVDs since I last met you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It means we had to move them somewhere else. So, you were having a bit of a clear out, and wasn't that originally your flatmate's table? It was, it was. Um, surplus the requirement in the end, but yeah, yeah, it was his. Well, I thought it might have been a serving table, the kind of thing that you used only at Christmas. So, I thought, how about make it into a little workstation that you might want to use? If you were working oh, from home. That's awesome. So I've had it sandblasted. I've given it a, the interiors a little bit of colour and some pattern. That's amazing. And made it into a desk with a fold down flap on it. The colour is loads better, isn't it? Oh, I'm glad you yeah, like it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. And I'm so pleased to say that's sold. It's gone off to a new home and it's, it's found a, uh, a buyer. And I have profit for you. I've got £223 what? here. What? That. OK. Awesome. That's awesome. That is far more than I expected. I'm quite pleased with that. It's that's like amazing. More than I expected yeah, yeah, as well. yeah, yeah, that's really good. £223 there. You weren't expecting it. What are you going to do Absolutely with it? Absolutely not. Somewhere to store my DVDs. Maybe a DVD rack. Uh, I think your housemate ha might have some dibs on that as well, mightn't he? Absolutely. I think he's negotiated himself some commission. So, yeah, I think fair play. Excellent. Well, I'll leave you to deal with that. But thanks so much for letting me come and find you today. And I had loads of fun with your table. Awesome. Nice to see Cheers. you. Cheers. Thank Bye. you. Sarah's total costs came to £72. The desk and bookcase sold for £295, leaving Mark with £223 of profit to share with his housemate. Well, some of it at least. With one sale under her belt, Sarah's in Margate to find out how Zoe's got on with the tricky toughened glass. I'm really pleased with how these three have turned out. As usual, I'd quite like to keep them if I could, but I'm very interested to see what Sarah thinks of them. Well, I've got a fairly good imagination, so when I leave somebody with something like a chest of drawers or a chair to update, I can kind of imagine what it might look like when I pick it up. But pieces of glass? No idea. If you've had some bungled building work and are left with unmanageable materials, it doesn't mean they can't still create a splash. Against all the odds, Zoe has repurposed the unrepurposable. The toughened glass now sits flush in a bespoke handmade coffee table, which is edged with pale wood and elevated with sleek modern legs. The vibrant floral pattern on the glass carries over onto Zoe's new printed wall signs, which is embellished with positive slogans and framed with reclaimed wooden trim. Zoe's attempted to turn someone's mistake into three fun pieces of furniture. There's no mistaking her hard work, but will Sarah be impressed? Zoe, is that glass? You've been having fun, haven't you? Yeah, I've been really enjoying myself with the stuff that you brought, Sarah. Got a coffee table and a pair of vintage-looking lettered signs. Oh, Zoe, they look amazing. The signs look really vintage and the table look just, well, really fresh. So talk me through how you've made the table. Well, I wanted it to kind of sink in and sit in a, in a trough almost, so I built one myself. I've got a ply base and then I built up the edges and kind of framed it flush. Really snug, really tight. That's not going anywhere. Hopefully to a new home, because it looks great. So what was the process? It was solid colour on one side, so you've scraped that back and printed underneath it? That's it. That's exactly what I did. And it's so cool because it does this fantastic, like, crystal clear, wipeable surface that's never going to scratch away because it's all underneath. And then the tiny scraps that you gave me felt like they wouldn't really be very usable, but I've turned them into some kind of cheerful fairground, seaside-y, positive slogans. I think you've made some really interesting pieces out of what you were given, and they've got a really different look, haven't they? But were you all right on the budget? Because it's obviously been a bit of a process to get to here. It's 4 50 for the table and 100 each on the signs, and I think you can make a good profit out of that. Yeah, I hope so. I think they are inspiring things. Thank you for all the hard work. Oh, brilliant. So nice to see you. Thanks for all your hard work. Take care, Sarah. See you later. Bye. Bye. I can definitely see me painting and printing onto glass again. In fact, don't expect any more furniture from me that's wooden because I enjoyed this so much. I think I'm just going to do some more of it. 
I think Zoe has done an amazing job repurposing that glass. A tricky material to work with. It's now inspirational, beautiful and useful. Oh, hello there. At the recycling centre, Sarah couldn't miss Ruth's splashback glass. We've had a disastrous kitchen fit, and so this is all excess. It's a difficult thing to repurpose. You cannot cut this, it will just shatter. But that didn't stop Sarah having a go. I'm so chuffed it's going to be reused and not wasted. It certainly has been reused, Ruth. And after being advertised online, the table and signs were sold to private buyers. Sarah's in Canesham to drop in on Ruth to tell her what became of her glass and hand over the profit. Hello, Ruth. Ah, oh, hello. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How is the kitchen? Up, running and lovely? It's done. <laughs> yes, <laughs> what a relief. <laughs> Excellent. It's such a process. And I think when we spoke at the recycling centre, it was such a shame because the splashbacks and things, there's very little you can do with them, isn't there? Yes, really, really difficult to recycle. Re they're treated and very di we didn't know what to do with it. I had to call in the big guns because I really needed somebody who could do something really decorative with them. There is a fantastic designer down in Margate who specialises in surface pattern and she's called Zoe. So I've got some pictures here to show you. I can't wait to see. <laughs> she made a coffee table and signs out of the longer bits. They're amazing! That's that's just amazing. I'm so pleased. Do you know, they're just brilliant. That's so clever. I, that's, I love it. I love them. That's, that's, just, that's just brilliant. She's never printed on something like that before and now she doesn't want to stop. So it's really been a great thing for her to work on. I'm just so tough. And that is just an added bonus. Well, talking of bonuses, I've actually got some money here for you because after her hard work, there is a £250 profit for you. That is fantastic. Oh, that, I'm so pleased. Any idea what you might spend it on? Yes, I know exactly where this is going. It's going to um, a small and really very special charity called The Life Project in Bath. Um, and they provide for adults with learning difficulties and they provide support to their families, their parents and carers. Oh, fantastic. And that's a very generous donation. So thank you very much and so nice to see you. Thank Thanks you. ever so much. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. It costs £650 for Zoe to create the table and signs. All three sold for a total of £900, meaning Ruth has £250 that she's going to donate to a local charity. After getting cash back for the splashbacks, Sarah's in Stockport to see if Simeon's managed to brighten up the old armchair. Simeon had a hard decision to make about the fabric, so has he made the right choice? I'm absolutely in love with the fabric. It's got a beautiful story to it, and I can't wait to tell Sarah all about it. For your sake, Simeon, I hope it has a happy ending. Well, the master of mid-century has taken on my chair, so it's not something that's in his comfort zone, so anything could have happened with this one. Chairs don't come with more wear and tear than this one. And even though the bottom had fallen out of it, it had the potential to be taken back to the top. Simeon has given the chair a regal restoration opting for a dark midnight blue woolen fabric for the seat. Simeon has recovered it using traditional upholstery techniques that comply with all modern fire safety standards. For the back, Simeon has chosen a luxurious short pile velvet with details of birds, royalty and tea, accompanied by matching cushions. With only a light wax of the frame to highlight its age and history, Simeon has tried to give the chair a sympathetic spruce up. But will his fabric choices sit well with Sarah? Hey, Sim. That's a sight for sore eyes. It looks so smart, Simeon. That makes me very happy because, yeah, it's been a bit of a troublesome little chair, as all little chairs are. But it has had such a transformation. It looks super smart. I love the fact that you haven't over-polished it, that you've kept the age to it. But the fabric choices are inspired. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Firstly, the blue fabric is a recycled wool. 
and this is by a designer based here in Manchester. This fabric has a beautiful story to it. You know, it's all about King Charles II bringing tea to the United Kingdom for the first time. It's, yeah, I absolutely love it. I love the fact you've created a bit of story to the chair. You've added detail in all the right places. Oh, it's unbelievable. You should be so chuffed with it. I am chuffed with it. I got to put all my traditional skills to the test, so I've really enjoyed it. So I'm hearing lots of work, lots of time spent, and traditional materials. 550 was where I was hoping it was going to end up. Do you know what, Sarah? New organised Simeon is the way forward because I've planned ahead, looked at the budget, planned my materials out, which means I've come in bang on budget. That's such good news for me because I think you've created something beautiful. Thanks, Sarah. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for all the hard work. Bye. Bye. I've got the reaction that I wanted. I love this chair, Sarah agrees, and now she's gone off to sell it, and I can't wait to see where it ends up. Well, if I was handing out marks, I would say Simeon gets a 10 out of 10 for that chair. Inspired fabric choices, lovely traditional upholstery techniques, and a beautiful end result. Super chuffed with that one. Oh, hello there. Sarah swooped in when she spotted Charles's chair. Yes, it's been sat in the garage for a while. This time it moved on. The chair had lived a life. It might have actually been my grandmother's. But Sarah wanted to breathe new life into it. I'm delighted it's got a potential new future. It'll be very interesting to see what she does with it. Well, Charles, it was Simeon who took this one on, and after it was advertised, it was snapped up by a private buyer. Sarah's in Canesham to show Charles the chair's new fancy fabric and hand over some cash. Hello, good afternoon. Good Charles, to see you. How Hello. are you? I'm very good, thank you very much indeed. Very nice to see you again. And you. And so, gosh, there were some exciting things coming out of your garage. Uh, the old chair. Uh, and they've been in your family for quite some time, haven't it? Yes, I think it was my grandmother's. So, probably at least late Victorian, if nothing else. It actually had to be handed over to the hands of the professionals. A uh, lovely chap from Simeon. So it now looks like this. I say, isn't that impressive? Oh, yes, that looks lovely. It almost looks French. He has chosen a beautiful handmade fabric for it. I am highly impressed. I think it's, it's kept its shape. And I, I'm very, very impressed by what's been done, really am. Great well, stuff. It's... Thank you very much. Oh, it's a pleasure. It now has a long life ahead of it. And I've got money here for you from the sale. I've got £100 profit. That's very welcome. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, an absolute pleasure. Do you think you have an idea about what you might spend it on? Well, it's going towards some trees. Oh, fantastic. Um, we've got to have a little bit of work done and we've got one or two that have died. So I think I'd like to replace them. Excellent. Well, um, I'm very pleased we managed to save it. And anything else in the shed? I'll be at the recycling centre <laughs> sometime soon. <laughs> you never know. Thank you so much. Good, thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Simeon came in on budget at £550. The new look chair was sold for £650, giving Charles £100 to treat himself to some trees. Lovely. Sarah saved three items from the skips. The serving table is now serving another purpose. The splashback glass found another use. And the old chair is now fit for a king. Well, the things I picked up were packed with potential, but Zoe and Simeon went the extra mile to make them really shine. So now they are beautiful items restored and really brightening up their new homes.